The Modern Warfare 3 season is right around the corner. It is two weeks away and a lot of the rosters are starting to fill their spots, locking their teams and gearing up for another Call of Duty League season. However, for one team, the Los Angeles Gorillas, they have yet to make any roster moves. They have not signed a single player or anybody to the coaching staff, which leaves the Call of Duty League in jeopardy of becoming an 11 team league which will honestly mess everything up. After the MW2 season, the Los Angeles Gorillas released everyone from their team and have yet to make any roster moves. And this puts the whole organization in jeopardy as they may not even have a team this year. So what happened to the Los Angeles Gorillas in the Call of Duty League? At the end of 2019, going into the Modern Warfare season, the Call of Duty League was introduced, which is a 12-team franchise-based model coming from the Overwatch League and made all the teams city-based. It cost it costed $25 million to join the league, and there was one organization that had their eyes set on securing a spot in the Call of Duty League. Cronky Sports and Entertainment serves as the principal owner of the Los Angeles Rams football team and also has stakes in the Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Avalanche. But as esports has been growing over the years, they wanted to expand into the esports scene, so that's exactly what they did. On August 10th, 2017, Cronky Sports and Entertainment bought an Overwatch franchise spot known as the Los Angeles Gladiators, and were looking to expand more into esports from the traditional sports that they were used to being invested in. So on August 20th, 2019, Cronky Sports and Entertainment purchased a $25 million roster spot for the Modern Warfare 2019 CDL season. And after purchasing this roster spot, they branded their Call of Duty team as the Los Angeles Gorillas. And that is the team that we know today and the team that is currently in jeopardy. So how exactly did we get here? Let's start from the beginning of the Call of Duty League. So with the first year of the Modern Warfare 2019 season, the Los Angeles Gorillas were starting to assemble and they went after a few notable Call of Duty pros, one being Aches, who they named the captain alongside Aqua, Decimate, Saints, and Lacefield. And the whole organization was hyped for the season. They were excited and they were hopeful that the team would get some wins during this season. Unfortunately, whenever the league got underway in Modern Warfare, the team had a very disappointing performance. They were unable to win a major tournament the entire season and then ended up losing in losers round one at Call of Duty Champs. They made a bunch of roster changes throughout the year, but every time they made a change, they found little to no success. And the Los Angeles Gorillas ended the Modern Warfare 2019 season in last place, placing 12th in the Call of Duty League. And I'm sure this was extremely disappointing for the LA Gorillas organization but they didn't want to give up hope just yet. Going into the Cold War season, they decided to make an entire team change, picking up the 2018 CDL champs in a soul, silly, and apathy alongside Vivid, hoping for a more promising season ahead of them. And they even invested more into the Call of Duty League by creating a challengers team, the LAG Academy, and the organization began really diving into Call of Duty esports and becoming more invested than ever before. They started off the Cold War season in a pretty rough spot, but they did find a little success whenever they finished third place during Major 1 of Call of Duty Cold War, but unfortunately this would be the only hint of success they would find throughout this entire year because during the rest of the season they ended up struggling and ended the Cold War season 8-26, and earning 100 CDL points, placing 11th in the Call of Duty League. I mean this was better than the year prior because they placed 12th, now they placed 11th. They were still probably pretty disappointed with that finish, but they decided to give it another go, make some more roster changes and move forward into the Vanguard season. The entire roster of Silly, Assault, Mental, and Apathy were released on August 29th, 2021, right before the Vanguard season began, and they ended up picking up Asim, Gunless, Slasher, and Hook, which is a pretty solid team on paper. It's not going to be a top team, but they were definitely pretty solid. However, for the LAG Academy Challengers team, things were not looking so good. The team ended up disbanding completely, leaving the Challengers roster empty going into Vanguard. During Cold War, the LAG Academy team struggled throughout pretty much the entire season, so everyone just dipped off the roster. The organization was completely focused on this Call of Duty Pro roster. Behind the scenes of Cronky Sports and Entertainment, they started making some moves in their esports division and they rebranded their entire esports division as The Guard. And that name may be more familiar to you because under the name The Guard, they picked up a Valorant, they picked up a Valorant roster 
Dang, I really struggled on that one. Which found great success in the 2022 season, winning the Stage 1 Challengers in March 2022. And it seemed like the whole organization was getting really invested into all different areas of esports. Now, the Guard is the umbrella under which the Los Angeles Gorillas are a part of. Like, every team, like the Valorant team, the Overwatch team, and the Call of Duty team are all under the Guard. However, for the Call of Duty roster, things were not looking so good. Now, going into this new season with this new team they said hey the third time's a charm we're gonna get it this year but just like the last two seasons they got off to a pretty rough start placing ninth through 12th during major one going into the major two qualifiers they ended up going three and two securing a winner's bracket spot for major two and that's when they shocked the world now going into major two the expectations were not high for lag because everybody had seen their past performances and going into the event gunless who was a key part to their roster was unable to compete so they had to pick up Spart to fill in for the tournament just days before the tournament began. Whenever the tournament started, they ended up losing their first winner's bracket match to Boston Breach, and it looked like their tournament was just about over. This is when the fairy tale run began. Just when everybody thought that it was over, they ended up making a crazy run during Major 2 in Minnesota, first beating Toronto Ultra, then the London Royal Ravens, then Seattle Surge, then the Florida Mutineers, and then they rematched against Boston Breach, who originally 3-0'd him at the beginning of the tournament and they played them in the losers grand finals and ended up beating them to make it to the grand finals against Atlanta phase now Atlanta phase was nasty in Vanguard and everybody was like there's no way that LAG is going to beat Atlanta phase and then the impossible happened LAG ended up beating Atlanta phase pretty convincingly winning in a 5-2 map count and winning $200,000 in their first ever major event win for the entire organization marking this as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, loser's bracket run in Call of Duty history. On top of that, they had a substitute who had just joined the team a few days before the event started. I mean, it was just insane and definitely the peak of the LA Gorillas organization. And this would be their first and unfortunately their last glimmer of success in the CDL before everything started going downhill. The rest of the season proved to be pretty rough. They placed 10th in Major 3 and 9th in Major 4, finishing 10th overall in the CDL. Better than the prior year because they placed 11th in Cold War. And then we get to the Modern Warfare 2022 season. The LA Gorillas ended up losing Slasher, but picked up Arcides, who was on Atlanta phase, and a Call of Duty veteran and world champ. And things were actually looking okay for the LA Gorillas, and they wanted to run it back once again. And just like every season prior, the season was off to an extremely rough start. They ended up placing 9th through 12th in Major 1 and ended up dropping Hook from the roster and made an entire roster change around Arcides. And the new roster going forward would be Arcides, Assault, Exceed, and a highly talented Challengers player, Joe Deceives. This would be the team for the rest of the season. They would go on to place 7th through 8th in Major 2, winning $10,000. But honestly, the rest of the season was chalked. Shortly after Major 2, on February 22nd, 2023, it was announced all over social media that the guard started downsizing at an insane rate, completely blindsiding all of their employees. They released nearly every single employee, including content creators, merchandise employees, and even their bosses. Downsizing to the bare minimum employees because Cronky Sports and Entertainment seemed to want to step away from esports. This was a shock to everyone because they had a bunch of employees who were really upset because they had invested so much into this company, into their esports department, and then they were just released because the organization wanted to step away from esports. This was not good for the Los Angeles Gorillas because they wanted someone to buy the team. And spoiler alert, nobody has bought out the team yet. So the guard has pretty much been stuck with the LA Gorillas roster spot. Arcides had a pretty disappointing season, probably one of his worst seasons in the Call of Duty League. And the team was heavily criticized for not trying in a lot of the CDL matches in Modern Warfare 2, and their results definitely show that the team chemistry was just not there at all. The LAG season ended with the team being in 11th place, and they didn't make COD champs. And shortly after the Call of Duty season ended, on June 26, 2023, the Los Angeles Gorillas announced that they were not exercising any player options for their players 
and released their entire coaching staff. Before the MW2 season started, they actually bought out Arcides for a three-year contract, but since the organization was going downhill, they ended up releasing Arcides off the contract, which just shows that the organization was really at a standstill. And even more bad news for the team, remember when I said they picked up a Valorant roster? Well, that Valorant roster was actually pretty successful, and despite winning the Valorant Challengers Ascension in 2023, the Guard announced that the Valorant roster would be dropped on August 29th, 2023, and shows that the company really does want to take a step back. So this leaves a big question mark for the Call of Duty roster if the Guard is just releasing all of these esports teams, they don't want anything to do with them. And as of this week, according to Zuma on his live stream, the Los Angeles Gorillas haven't even made a single move for their Call of Duty roster, and MW3 comes out in less than two weeks, which means that there's a potential that they don't even field a roster for this upcoming season, meaning that the league would be an 11-team league. There is a possibility that LEG can form a last-minute roster, but I mean, honestly, the team is looking chalked regardless and it's very unfortunate that this situation's happening and now everything is just a big question mark for their cod esports team altogether so i'm really curious to see what happened in the zuma live stream he was reading a reddit post that pretty much summarizes everything very well it says i keep seeing discussion about who lag will pick up but to me i think that lag will end up fielding nobody they simply won't participate in the league this year for those who are unaware last year in the overwatch league the season started with 19 teams instead of 20 because one of the teams decided not to field a roster. Rumors are that the parent organization went bankrupt and they could not fund operations for their esports side. Sounds familiar? This situation is not too far off from what LAG's parent organization, The Guard, is going through. They dropped out of Valorant despite making franchising and earlier this year reduced their staff to the bare minimum. It's also known that they've been looking for a buyer for their teams but no reports have come out about a buyer. To me, it looks like they have completely left esports with no social media post from any guard accounts since the end of September. So I think that overall we'll end up having an 11 team league this year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few days or even in the next few weeks. And I'm sure we will have some updates very soon. I'm recording this on Halloween. So first of all, happy Halloween. But also there has been no update yet so far. But this is the downfall of the Los Angeles Gorillas Call of Duty team. So I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on the entire situation. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. With that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace.